his back on you. When you turn your back on him, he's still good. Hey! You ought to give him some praise. You ought to give him some praise. He didn't promise he was be here today. Hallelujah. But you're here. He's worthy. He's worthy of all our praise. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy of all our praise. Hallelujah. My God did not set down on you. Hallelujah. Some folk might say, well, it don't take all that what Pastor Foster doing. You don't know what Pastor Foster went through where he came from. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Somebody went through something yeah. and God saved them. Yeah. <sighs> He's still doing it. Yeah. I wish y'all can be seated. See, God is a God of forgiveness. Y'all don't hear me. He's a God of forgiveness. But he saw fit to send his son that he may die that you and I may be forgiven. You know, I was praying tonight. I said, Lord, I have so, so many words that you have given me. And I've been working them. I got sermons in this book. And in my sleep one night this week, he wrote a word in cursing. Forgiveness. Hey, glory. Uh, Y'all didn't hear me. Forgiveness. And that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about forgiveness versus unforgiveness. Because, Father, I thank you for who you is. In our life. I thank you Lord God for just being God. And being God all by yourself. And Lord God there is no other God like you. And there won't be none other. Father I'm here for you today. Have your way. Speak to us. Speak through us. Bless your word and bless your people. Say not serve your notice. You're not welcome. I dismiss you not right now. You can leave. Amen. Amen. You know, forgiveness kept a whole lot of weight. Well, you believe me or not? It kept a whole lot of weight. And unforgiveness kept a whole lot of weight too. I won't come to the book of come out of the book of Matthew. 6 and verse 14 through 15. And this is what it say. I wait. I'm not in no hurry. I might take all before it's over with. But it's depending on how the spirit leads me. Okay. Matthew 6, 14 through 15. For if ye forgive men thy trespass, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Verse 15. But, that's a conjunction there, but if ye forgive not men thy trespass, neither will your heavenly Father forgive you. Your trespass. Lord, how much. So we, we, we ask the child of God, we, we must forgive. Now, you might say, well, that man wronged me. That lady wronged me. They did this to me. They did all that. I can't do it. Yes, you can with the help of the Holy Ghost. It's hard by yourself. Don't, don't, don't never try to forgive somebody that wronged you by yourself. Because you're going to always think about when you see that person coming, you're going to think about what they did to you, and you want to get them. God, through the Holy Ghost, is the only one that can help you. Listen to this here. If we forgive not, Jesus here emphasized that Christians must be ready 
and willing to forgive offense of others. Oh, if we are unwilling to forgive those who do you wrong, do us wrong, God will not forgive our trans or transgression or our offense or our prayer. Mm, mm, mm. Our prayer will be uh, delayed or stand still or void or no advantage. Amen. This is an important principle by which God forgives. Jesus hung on that cross from the sixth to the ninth hour. He had me on there, all of my junk and your junk on him that your heavenly father may forgive you. Amen. And guess what? He's still forgiving us. Hallelujah. Listen to this here. Forgive to me. To let go. Oh God. To let go. I forgive, but I won't forget. Let go. God will hold nothing against us. Even though you might think about it all the time, but you have the power not to retaliate on that. Let it go. And then it said, uh, <laughs> who? To leave it behind. See, that right there will keep me from getting my blessing from God. Yeah. Don't forget that the devil, he got, he got ways to cause you to be blessed. Uh -huh. If you're seeking for a financial way, the devil will allow something to be opened up for you and you thank it, God, but it gets you in a whole lot of trouble and it takes take you a day and years and months and all months and months to pay it off. Leave it behind. Hallelujah. Dismiss. Well, I dismissed that. God never gave me all my junk. All the stuff I had in the trunk, in the closet. And anyway, else, God forgave me. Amen. And God is greater than me. Amen. So wh what should I do? I should be just like God. Forgive it and go on by my bed. Leave it alone. God throw it in the sea of forgetfulness. He don't bring your past up to you no more. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Is I'm in the house today? Then it said, uh, <laughs> even to cancel, to cancel a debt. Well, you, people, you owe me. I ain't forget what you did to me. I ain't forgot it. Well, Brother Foster, you, you're supposed to forgive me and, and let go. The debt supposed to be canceled. Be with my imaginary friend I talked to, y'all. I ain't talking to the wall. You got to let it go. Listen. It is you the father of forgiveness of sin by God. God forgives sin, everything else about your life. Imply also the counseling of the gift. How many know that, that unforgiveness is a sickness? How many know that unforgiveness will cause you to lose rest? How many know every time you see somebody that wrong you and you had not forgive them, you want to fight them? You get mad at every time you see him. Here comes the devil. There he is. Or there she is. She did that to you. I wouldn't forgive her. All he's trying to do is get you to go straight to hell. That's all. Amen. Praise the Lord. We must forgive as Christians. And let it go. Put love in that place. <laughs> Amen. We are forgiven, we are to forgive another who, who done us wrong in the same way God has forgiven us. But I, God, you God, though. 
It don't take nothing for you to forgive. But one thing about I, 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 I need your help. I am willing, but I can't do it by myself. I need your help. Because every time I see the person that wronged me, I be want to hit them. I be want to jump on them. I want to knock them down. I'm being honest. God, help me. I'm, it's an illustration I'm using. I don't think I, nobody out there I did something wrong to forgive, do I? If I step on your toes, say, ouch. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> so likewise, shall my heavenly Father, Father, do also unto you, if ye from your heart forgive not everyone his brother thy trespass. So this is a hard thing. So what's in your heart going to come out? If that unforgiveness still rooted down in your heart, it's gonna come out, baby. I don't care how, I don't care how much you pray. I don't care how much you speak in tongues, shout out about. I don't care how much you fast. If it's hidden in your heart, when that person come up and what did something to you, that thing will rise up because the rooted deep down in your heart. There's a hard thing with God. It takes God to deal with our heart. It takes God to help us to forgive in the name of Jesus because he, uh, he's an expert on forgiving. If he forgave Paul, if he forgave Paul for persecuting the church, who do you think he'll do about you and me? Lord have mercy, Jesus. Okay, let, let's go on. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Listen. In this parable, Jesus teach that the forgiveness of God through feeling grieved uh, to repentance. And so, so in other words, God forgives the grieving and repentant sinner. Nevertheless, remain or uh, is conditioned. So this is conditional here. If you forgive, now I forgive you. He didn't say, I just forgive if you hold on to that. No. If you forgive, I forgive you. This is conditional. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. According to a person's willingness to forgive others. In other words, if we are unmerciful and unforgiving towards another person, hallelujah, listen, that will block the flow of God's forgiveness towards you. Oh, Lord. you might say, I don't believe that. The scriptures say in the book of uh, Psalm 66, 18, it says in these words right here. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not heal me. I know he was a merciful God. But, but one thing about God, God will always fix it in a way, amen, to get you to turn around. Amen. I'm, he will do so many everything. He will cause so much to come up. He, God will bag his hand back and allow the enemy to attack you. Yes, he will. Because of the unforgiving spirit. God said, well, I forgave you. Well, well, what's your problem? What you holding on for? What you holding on to for? Give a gift. Amen. Praise the Lord. You can give me a hand clap there. <laughs> Listen. <clears throat> Those who take pleasure in unrighteousness have, who have no hope or answer prayer when they call on God. Who? Those who take pleasure in unrighteousness have no hope of answering prayer when they call on God. You might be feeling, well, I'm just going to hold on to him. I know, I know forgiveness there. I know it there, but he just hurt me. Uh, she hurted me. My co-worker just hurt me. I, I brought them something from my heart. They brought them a lunch from my heart. They took it and threw it on the floor and stomped it. 
And I spent my hard working money on it. And they throw it on the floor and they stomped it. And then they on the stump, they, they ground it in the floor. My Lord, I, I, I can't do it. You're going to have to help me. You're going to help me. And when you come, you got to let me know that you, you want to help me. What did God do? Well, God said, well, I'm going to do something to show you that I want you to forgive that person. You might be praying, the Lord, help me to forgive that person. And every time you turn around, God will bring that person right in your face. <laughs> Go over there, God. Right in that face. And that person said, how you doing today? You doing okay? I just checking on it. Don't worry about that business. And God, God sent back there looking. When she asked me to help her, help him, and I sent some help, but... <laughs> And all of a sudden, when you didn't forget, it feels like a load of bricks sitting on your shoulder. You, you, can't, you can't care it all. Amen. And then all of a sudden, Lord, I can't handle it no more. I can't handle it, God. Do what you got to do, Lord God, that I may forgive. The next day, worry, hitting that person. <laughs> Man, you, the lunch I bought you. You throw it on the floor and you ground your foot. I was so mad at you, but by the spirit and the power of God, I forgive you. Shoot. You feel light, boy, like a load of bricks and jump off your shoulder because you forgave from your heart. Yeah. This is a hard thing with God, y'all. All right. You see that person next time, just be smiling, even though the devil knocking the door. That's him, that's him, that's him, that's him. That's him, that's him, that's him. You just smiling. Hey, how you doing? Yes. Yeah. How you doing? The ground my stuff in the floor. How you doing? You're doing good. You're doing right? yeah, I'm doing fine. Thank you. Amen. You shut the devil's mouth up. We must forgive. Amen. Listen, God wants us separated from sin. Only then will he respond who, to us as a father. Oh, God. One thing about God. He is a loving, a loving father. A loving God. He forgives anybody. Like I said earlier, let me just use Saul again. If he got if he forgiven Saul when he persecuted the church, amen. What do you think about us? He still a forgiving God. Amen. Let me go to another place right quick. I'm gonna be I'm trying not to beat you long. Let's go to the book of Colossians, uh, to Ephesians for a moment. See, unforgiveness bring about bitterness. Why you be so bitter? Not at the person that uh, that wronged you. You'll be bitter at other folk. Folks they ain't did nothing to you. Get bitter. At them. Just get hard down, mad at them just for nothing. And, and then again, some folk now, they'll get mad at a sign pole. It don't do them to tell you to stop. And every time you get to the sign, I, I hate that sign. I, I got, I'm in a hurry. She left home on time. He make me so sick and upset. I just hate that sign. <laughs> you just run. You fall low. In it. <laughs> Amen. Where I tell you to go? Okay. That's where I want you at. Praise the Lord. I know where it is. I'm going there. Yep, yep. You feed the fourth chapter down round by uh, verse uh, 32. He says in the word right here. He said, be ye kind one to another. Now, if we, if we don't be kind to that person that, that you had not forgive, you're still in trouble with God. Amen. Tender hearted. You need to have a tender hearted that God can use your heart to forgive. And then it's a forgiving one and another. Even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. It because of Christ that he's forgiven us. It because of Christ. It's not because of your good work. It's not because you receive him as your Lord and Savior. 
It because of what Christ did on the cross that God forgiven us. God forgave us before we came to him. God forgiven us before we were born again. God forgiven us. Amen, lights. Okay. Oh, I'm taking my time, Lord. Let, let's go to somewhere else. Uh, you know what? I can remember this story about Peter. Peter, Lord, how many times should I forgive them that wronged me? Or uh, seven times? The Lord said, no, I said seven times. Seven. 490. What? 490 times. That means that you got the cost to let to forgive folks. I don't care to step on your pretty shoes. See, a lot of people are getting mad if you step if they step on their stage at Allen Bank and they just come from the from the shoe shine shop and got them so shy. Boy, you can see your face in them. This is my step on them. Boy, they get hard down mad and don't want to forgive for you stepping in shoes. Put them in your pocket. <laughs> Let's go to uh, uh, Matthew 18. This is going to be my final scripture. I'm going to just deal with that. And I'm going to get out y'all here. <sighs> y'all pray for me. I, just, I, say, I say what will come to my mind. I'm, I'm, I ain't sorry for saying it. <clears throat> Matthew 18, you there? Let's start at verse 21. He said, now then Peter, then, then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how often should my brother sin against me and I forgive him till seven times? See, that's what he think with his little mind. That's what he think, the seven times. But Jesus is going to say in verse 22, Jesus said, saith unto him, I say not unto thee, unto thee, unto seven, seven times, but unto seventy times seven. That's a long time that you forgive a person. A long time. Amen? Hold your finger right there. Let's, let's, let's flip over to 1 John for a minute. Thank you, Holy Ghost. He, he brought me over there. Go to 1 John in the back of the Bible, close to Revelation. Teach Holy Ghost. <clears throat> see, it can be, let's see, you might have done somebody wrong about 40 years ago and you're still on the earth and you forgot all about it. The Holy Ghost bring us up in your mind. Bring things up, you know. I remember when I, when I first started ministering, something happened years ago with me and, and a certain family, ain't called no name, me and this guy, Got to fighting, but but the lady I was talking to at that time, she hit me. I hit her back. Yes, I did. Back that time, yeah. Cause back then I didn't care who you were. You hit me, I'm hit you back for no reason at all. Didn't want me to go nowhere. We wasn't mad. And so she ran and told her brother. And we was at the pool hall one night. And he came up to me. And said, you you hit my brother. Yeah, I did. Then bam, we got to fighting. He hit me, I hit him. I jumped back and hit him with a pool stick across the head. Grabbed him to him again, we were just tossing again. And then, years later on, God saved him and saved me too. Wait a minute. And I saw him one day. I said, I need to talk to you, man, because it was bothering me. I said, I remember me and you to fight back in the day, you know, I did some things to you, did some things to me, but I apologize, I'm sorry. Guess what, he apologized to me too. Amen. Amen. See, I ain't nothing wrong with forgiving, but owning up to your fault. Right. Own up to that won't make you less than a woman or less than a man. Mm -hmm. That make you a bigger man and a bigger woman. Right. And on God team. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But look, look what he say in 1 John verse 9. He said, if we confess our sin, Lord, I have wronged Bebo. And people kept on asking me to forgive him. I'm sorry. So 
I confess that if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin. Mm-hmm. And to clean us from all unrighteousness. How many know that unforgiveness is an unrighteous spirit? How many know that? Unrighteous spirit. We must forgive. I don't care who it is. I don't care if the little baby, the baby slapped you and you slapped him back. <laughs> a baby is not, a baby going to do that. You shouldn't slap that baby. You said, I'm sorry, baby, for slapping you back. Amen. Verse 10 says, if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a lie, and the truth is not in us. Amen. I'm talking about, what if you had done something about 40 years ago, somebody, then, and then somebody tried to confront you and said, oh, I ain't did that. I ain't do that. And then God bring it back to your mind later on. You did do that. Oh, Lord, I'm so sorry. I repent. Go back to that person that repent. Okay, let's go back and look and see if Jesus would tell Peter in here. So Jesus here was going to tell them a story about a kingdom. Listen to these words because it's very important. Verse 23 says, Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which would take account of his servant. Now the king that came back, he wanted money. And when he had began to reckon Amen. To call things together, get his stuff back. One was brought unto him which owed him 10,000 talent, 10, talent, maybe a thousand gold or silver or whatever. Amen. But for as much as he had not paid, his Lord command him to be, to be sold and his wife and his children and all that he had and payment to be made. Now back in the day, they didn't care. They didn't care who all were in your house. You don't have my money. All of them going to jail. All of them going to jail. But look what this man here did. He, he, he had some knowledge here. So look at verse, uh, 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 verse, uh, oh, verse 26, right? Yeah. Then the servant, therefore, fell down and began to worship, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Now, this, see, this man here knew what to do. He knew how to get things in order with his Lord, with his Lord, master, whoever. So he bowed down. He got down there with the worship and talking, have patience with me. Amen. And go to say verse 27. Then the Lord that servant, then the Lord of that servant will move with compassion. He will move with compassion. And that's the way God will do us when we go to God want him to help us to, uh, to forgive somebody else. Amen. He, God be moved with compassion. And loose him and forgave him the debt. Ain't that something like that? The, that man, he was so scared, you know, because he, he finna go get kept in the prison, his wife, his children, and all they had, probably Duncan, dog, all they had going to be kept in prison. Amen. But look, let's go on and read a more. But, look here, but that same servant, the same one he just forgiven, went out and found one of his fellow servants who owe him a hundred pence, I mean a hundred pence, it's a pen, it's you, but it's a pen. And he laid hold on him and took him by the throat, saying, pay me that thou owest. Now this man, he just got forgiveness. Amen. And so he went and found his own people that owe him. So man, we began to choke this man and the man to pay him. But look what the man said. Look now, look what he said. <laughs> Amen. He said right here. He said, and his fellow servant fell down at his knee because he was watching what he did to his Lord. Amen. He was watching. So he was looking for the same, same treatment from him. Amen. And brought him saying, have patience with me and I will pay thee all. This man didn't have no patience. But look what happened. 
he, he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. Now, do you think this man wrong? Come on now, talk to him. I, I think this man wrong because he just got forgiven. He, did, he bowed down before his Lord, and the Lord had compassion on him, had patience with him, and the same thing came to him. He didn't have it. Amen? So in other words, the Lord looking for us to have the same compassion on somebody else. And they come to me by now. Say, people say, Brother Father, will you forgive me? Yeah, I will. I'll forgive you. I'll forgive. Don't do it no more. I'll forgive you. But what if you do it again? I had to forgive him again. Because the Lord do the same thing for us. If we, back, we backslide and we repent, he forgive us. Amen. If we mess up, amen, and repent, he forgive us. But don't get caught and mess up and don't repent. Let's think about that for a moment. I'm just about finishing. Y'all pray for me. Amen. And he would not but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So listen, so when his father's servant saw what he had done, the people that the people around him that saw what his Lord done to him, they saw it. They were, they were, they were very soft, sorry, and came and told unto the Lord all that was done. He told it. Amen. He told it. And let's sit down for a moment. He told it. Never knew who round you, somebody wronged you, and you had not forgiven. And then the person saw how God forgave you. That person good Father, your child, I saw you forgave that child, but she won't give that, forgive that person that wronged you. What the Lord going to do? You're going to deal with that heart. Let's finish the scripture. Amen. Verse 32 says, then, the, then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I have forgiven thee all thy debt, mm -mm, because thou desirest me. He desired God to forgive him. Amen. What God did? He forgave him. Should it not thou also have a gift, have compassion on thy father's servant, even I, as I, I had pity on thee? Oh, God, that's something to think about right there. So we, we, you know, we carry a heavy weight when it comes to forgiving people. Amen? But one thing about it, oh, thank you, Lord God. When you have a desire to forgive somebody, the Holy goes right in the back of that word, get ready to push it out. So you say, I forgive. Even though one part of you don't want to say it, but one part of you want to because the other part wants to stay in festival with God. Who is that? The real man on the inside. Because this flesh ain't going to do nothing. It don't, if it's by itself, he don't want to do nothing. All he want to do is have his, have his time. And all he want to do is stay mad and stay upset and and just all that other stuff. That's what he want to do. But thank God for the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Okay, verse 34 says, And his Lord was rough. He was angry with him. And delivered him to be tormented, tortured, till he should pay all that was done due unto him. Let's think about this now. Some people now, in prison with him that did wrong and how the Lord treated him. Ain't no telling who in the prison that this man put in, had put in prison. Amen. Now he in there with all, of the, all his enemy now and guess what they're going to do to him? Probably beat him up. Probably slap him a couple of times. Amen. When you in a place without God, the devil have a field day with you. Amen. When you're in a place, amen, God constantly telling you to forgive and you don't, the enemy will have a field day with you. Amen. Like I said earlier, unforgiveness is like cancer. 
it will eat you up. Amen. You go to sleep, you'll see that person in your dream at night. Oh, why can why, why I keep seeing this person? <laughs> then after you realize who, who it is, you might see a word, unforgiveness, 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 go on, unforgiveness, unforgiveness, unforgiveness. And then after that, God said, forgive, 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 forgive. That's what kind of God he is. Because God wants us to be in right fellowship with him. And not on to him with one another. Amen. I read this scripture before. I'm going to summarize this up right here. Say it right here. He says, so likewise, mm, 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 shall my heavenly father do also unto you, if ye from your heart forgive not everyone his brethren that trespass. So in other words, we must forgive. One more scripture, I'm going to let you go. The Holy Ghost just read that scripture to me. Go to uh, Colossians, third chapter. Well, I'm telling you, I had a whole lot of stuff the Lord had to forgive me for. A whole lot of stuff. Amen. And you know what? A lot of things that God had already forgiven me for, and he's going to devil digging them up. Try to bring them back to my mind, this and that. So one night when I got through my prayer work, I went in my in that room, closed the door, and I bind that rascal. I said, God have forgiven me, and you trying to bring it back up to torture me? I rebuke you right now in the name of Jesus. And I bind you in your demon. I send to the depths of the sea and take root and never turn. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, come, I cover myself with the blood of Jesus right now, Lord. Amen. You got to talk to him like that, y'all. We can't just, devil, I bind you. Go to the depths of the sea and take root. You got to talk with authority. You have authority. We got authority. Because Jesus upon the rock I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Colossians 3rd chapter, look at verse, verse 13. He's a forbearing one. We got to put up with one of y'all. As Christians, we got to put up with one of We got to bear each other burden. Amen. We got to. Praise the Lord. And forgiving one, that word again, forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against you, Against any, even as Christ, who forgive you, so also do ye. Hey, ye mean you. Think about it. Do you have a, I have a quarrel with anyone that been going for so long and had not forgiven them, even though I'm born again saved now and, and that thing keep coming up? You might need to go to that person and ask for, and forget, ask for forgiveness. You never know why it keep coming up. Amen, because one thing about God don't want your prayer to be hindered. He don't want your prayer to be standing still. See, you, you remember how the, the Israelites kept on God, saved them, for, saved them, and they go and do sacrifice and worship God and praise God, and then all of a sudden they go back to their own way, worship the idol of God, they ain't got no power, they can't see, they can't hear, they can't feel, they can't talk, and they be praying to God, and the prayer go up to the sky and bounce back. God caused the sky to be like iron. Can't get through because of your sin. Think about it. If you're sitting out there with unforgiving spirit, you're asking God to help you. And God has sent all type of people in your faith that you're wrong. And you ain't said nothing to them. God sent help. Because he's going to send the same person that, that, that uh, mess you up so you forgive them. Do you receive that today? Come on, give him a hand, come and pray. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus.